Hello my friends and welcome back to the rabbit hole. This is indeed another skincare review and today we are talking about the brand Herbivore. Now I've had a really good experience with this brand. It's something that I didn't, I guess I didn't expect this brand to personally click with me as much as it did. But let me go ahead and start this video off with an overview of the brand and then if you are interested in only the product reviews, timestamps always in the description box. All right, so Herbivore is a more natural, clean beauty brand, and I've tried a few of these in the past. Usually, in my experience, I try them, I have opinions on them, and then I just kind of stop using their products. This is a brand, however, that I can see myself continuing to use. What I think Herbivore's real strength is, is that they've done a fantastic job of balancing these clean, plant-based ingredients and avoiding ingredients that could cause irritation, potential allergens, at least in general. To be completely honest with you, sometimes I do feel a lot of pressure to be very, very careful with my recommendations. You know, just because a product worked out for me, if I see an ingredient in there that I think, oh, at least, you know, 5% of people might break out from that ingredient, then I'm a lot more cautious about recommending the entire product. I feel like, you know, the last thing I want to do is say, hey guys, this product is great, you should buy it, and then 5% of you that buy it break out. That's 5% too many. So that's why I'm actually quite enthusiastic about this video. I feel that most of the products I'm going to be talking about, if you purchase them, you're probably not going to have any kind of an adverse reaction. You know I know about this because of my story with bergamot. It took me way too long to identify that was a problem for me, and yet that is a problem for a significant, even if slightly small, is still statistically significant portion of the population. So I guess what I'm saying is that to find a natural, clean beauty brand that I feel comfortable recommending, even for those with more sensitive skin, is actually very exciting. And to answer the title of this video, yes, for once, this is a clean brand where I feel like if you have a lot of allergies, if you break out easily from products, you probably can still use this brand. Granted, I will always say, know your skin, know what ingredients work for you and always read ingredients no matter what a person on youtube or a reviewer or anybody says know yourself that is the most important thing in purchasing skincare but you know another aspect of this brand that i like when we're talking about clean products i've talked about this a lot some of these brands are so expensive and you know it's still a sephora brand so we're not talking about the ordinary prices but we are talking about much less than Tata Harper, and not to shade Tata Harper, but you know, sometimes I look at ingredients lists and I have to kind of run this mental calculation in my head of is this really worth the price tag? With this brand, I look at the price, I look at the ingredients, and I'm like, it's actually not bad. One more kind of introductory comment though, so I am not, I personally don't limit myself to only clean products, so for me, some of the best results that I had with this brand were a result of combining with other products, including the Ordinary, including retinols. I just did my retinol trial. Uh, so, you know, if you do have a more stubborn skin condition, it may benefit you to perhaps use some of these in conjunction with more conventional type of skincare. That's my opinion. I know some people are comfortable with that and others aren't. But just so you know, that's what you're looking at is somebody who combined with other products. And I will tell you what throughout this video. One con, and I don't say this to make anybody who just purchased these products feel bad. I just say cons so that you have a better idea of whether a brand is for you personally or not. So my one con with this brand, and this is going to apply with pretty much every clean brand, is related to a little bit of, I guess, rumors. I don't want to confirm or deny this, but I've heard that some people uh, saw what appeared to be mold growing in their products. I'm not sure, again, I'm not sure if it was or wasn't, but I would always be careful with more natural products. You know, this just makes logical sense. One of the uh, ingredients that people are avoiding in you know, more clean, natural products is preservatives. And the less preservatives you have in a product, the longer its lifespan is going to be. That's just a logical conclusion. So at the very least, I would tell you two things with both this brand and all clean beauty brands. You know, purchase these if you're the kind of person who goes through your skincare, not the kind of person who forgets you bought skincare and it's been sitting in your bathroom for six months 
or be the kind of person who stores your skincare in your fridge. You got two options there to deal with it. Just wanted to put out there a potential reason to maybe go with another brand depending on you as a person. And one more thing before we get into the product reviews, we're kind of trialing this new icon system. This is going to be kind of a result of you know, what Sephora says these products are for, plus my own personal opinions. So if they are saying something is for sensitive skin, but I'm worried about an essential oil in it, I'm not gonna say sensitive skin, that kind of thing. Let me know if it's helpful for you. First time we've ever done this. All right, let's get into these product reviews. I'm gonna go through them favorite to least favorite. Well, kind of, one is out of place. Uh, and just so you know, there's really only one product in this entire video where I have a slight concern. So again, you know, this brand, this brand did well for me. Let's start with the Baca Heel Serum. I'm convinced this brand knows how good this product is because they've been giving it away as gifts with purchase to kind of everyone. That's how I got mine when I made my oils purchase. This retails for $54 for an ounce. And again, not a bad price tag, quite reasonable for a mid-range brand. This is indeed a Baca Heel Serum. I'm not sure of the percentage. It might be kind of high. Again, I'm just not sure, just looking at where it is in the ingredients list. You guys, this is such an excellent formula if you are struggling with acne. If you saw my skin kind of recently, I had a whole new flare up of acne, a whole new breakout session and it's cleared up and I attribute that a lot to this and also to my retinols. The combination has been incredible. When I personally use this, I do combine it with the ordinary salicylic 2% and the reason for that is because I read a study that found 1% Baca Heel plus 2% salicylic acid had the exact same results as retinol. But here's the thing, Baca Heel for as similar to retinol as it is, is much more stable and safe than retinol meaning it does not degrade in the presence of light. It's an ingredient that you can use while pregnant. But you know, I've talked about this a lot. The reason why you might opt to purchase a $54 serum instead of the Ordinary's $7 ingredients individually is because what you get in these types of products is a complete formula. This is not something where you necessarily need to layer it. Yes, I did combine it with something else, but you don't necessarily need to. This has everything in it that you would need in order to fight acne. It's got antioxidants, anti-inflammatory ingredients, it's got turmeric, it's got PHAs in it, which we've talked about before. Just a very complete ingredients list. If you are struggling with acne prone skin, even if you wanna use this for anti-aging purposes, it's just such a great formula. My one suggestion to herbivore if they were to watch this video would be to include white willow bark since that is a natural alternative to salicylic. I think that would up the ingredients list in this even more. But I did wanna comment, you know, when I did my AM skincare routine, I talked about using this. Uh, as far as whether I will switch over to the Inky list, hold on a second. I swear I'm the worst person on YouTube to do hauls. I have all this stuff in front of me that I want to haul, but yes, I did purchase the Inky list. Uh, looking at the ingredients list, yeah, it's something that it's not as complete as herbivores. So, you know, when you're making these decisions between going cheap or going more expensive, that is the difference in what you are purchasing. So I plan to try the Inky list. I may even try Revolutions as well, but if they're not doing it for me, I will go back to this. This is a, it's a fantastic serum. They did a great job of avoiding those ingredients that could be potential concerns. So yeah, great, great product, herbivore you know it. Next up we have the product that started it all for me. This is the Blue Tansy Resurfacing Clarity Mask. I got this as a free sample and that is what triggered me to want to make a purchase. I really, really love this. It retails for $48 for two ounces. And also it makes a lot of sense that I would personally love this. This contains the ingredients that just work wonders for me. I don't think I've ever not been impressed with an enzyme action mask. Enzymes work really well on my skin. There's something that is a more gentle alternative to using AHAs. And in this particular product, they did something that I've never seen before. They combined those enzymes with blue tansy. Now blue tansy is an essential oil, but it does seem to work better for most people. It is anti-inflammatory, antibacterial. It really seems to make a massive impact on any kind of redness, whether, whether that's from rosacea or from acne. Blue tansy works for me. I first discovered it in Sunday Riley's Luna. And ever since I've been like, yeah, that's actually, that's a good ingredient for me. 
And then in this mask, they did include that white willow. So again, you know, this is just a product where I see an immediate reduction in redness, and then the next day my acne is reduced consistently with this wonderful, wonderful product, very light in texture. I don't think I have very much of this left to kind of show you. Um, I will try though, I will try. So there you go. So you can see, you know, that blue color is naturally occurring from the blue tansy oil. So it feels very calming on the skin, really gives great results. This is one of their star products and for good reason. Oh, I wanted to mention that with this brand, they have a couple of really well curated sets. So if you're interested in the brand, but you're not sure what full sizes you wanna purchase, I'd direct you to the sets. There is a perfect little set if you have more acne prone skin that contains this and the lapis oil, I will make sure to link it in the description box. Great place to start. So let's go over the oils next. And like I just mentioned, this is one of these sets. I bought the mini facial oil trio, really great way to sample all these. Thank you so much Herbivore for offering a discount on sets instead of upping the price. You have no idea how much I respect that. So with all these oils, I will tell you what they're for, what time of day I'd recommend using them. Let's start with my absolute favorite. It is the Lapis Balancing Facial Oil. This one retails for $72 for 1.7 ounces. Again, you know, I'd probably, I'd probably side eye herbivore if this was $72 for an ounce, but $72 for 1.7 ounces, that's reasonable to me. This is, as the name implies, a fantastic balancing oil. Whether you are dealing with redness from rosacea or acne, this blue tansy in here is going to help to fight off redness by being anti-inflammatory. It's got other antioxidants in it. It's in a squalane base, which makes it very friendly towards all skin types. It is a little bit of a heavier oil though, so it is going to be something you're probably gonna wanna use at night, if for no other reason than that it too is indeed blue. But I love it. I love that they've used plant extracts in here instead of essential oils where things go a little more iffy. Just a really, really great product that has taken into consideration the fact that sensitivity can occur with acne, rosacea, skin issues. And then we have the Phoenix Cellar Regenerating Facial Oil. This one is $88 for 1.7 ounces. This is so rich in ingredients that I don't see in most products. It's a very unique product. It contains rosehip, chia, sea buckthorn, coenzyme Q10. It's a very antioxidant rich softening oil. I think you are going to absolutely love this if you have dry skin. Now it is gonna be a little heavier. It's probably gonna be ideal for night use because of that. But you know, again, this is, it's a really unique oil. Now I did say that uh, good Molecules has at least taken inspiration from this, at least that's how I feel, since they do have a $10 oil which contains sea buckthorn and rosehip. So you may want to at least try that one if you are looking for something more budget friendly. But yes, not gonna lie, this is a great product, especially if you have dry skin. Again, nothing in this ingredients list that makes me think, uh-oh, sensitive skin might not want to use it. I just think it's a very well-made oil. And then the Orchid Youth Preserving Facial Oil. This one is $64 for 1.7 ounces. And you guys, this is the only product in this entire video where, uh, herbivore, why did you put a certain ingredient into this? It was so close to perfect. This one is the lightest of the three oils that I tried. In fact, with this one, I think you could use it during the day. For this video, I have it on my face and I feel like I don't look super oily. So I think that if you have a more dry skin type and you're looking for a daytime oil, this might work for you. However, if you have sensitive skin, I'd be warned. The problem that I have with this product is that it contains jasmine oil. Jasmine oil contains linalool, which has a lot of problems associated with it for a certain percentage of people. Again, some people will be able to use it, no problem, but you know, that's a fragrance ingredient and that's again where you sometimes start running into issues. And don't get me wrong, I absolutely love jasmine in my perfumes, but when it gets into my skincare, I just gotta get more cautious. You know, again, I didn't have problems with this, but this was the product where I noticed the most people saying that they saw it causing breakouts or they speculate that it is what caused their breakouts. A lot of people seem to jump on the assumption that it's the coconut oil in this. I, oh, I, I've said this so much. I've been lamenting this lately. I really wish we could just do away with the comedogenic system. I think it creates a lot of kind of misleading ideas 
because first of all, the coconut oil in here is not just pure coconut oil, it's fractionated coconut oil, which actually just has a lighter texture and really shouldn't cause any type of breakouts. And I guess what I'm saying is I, I wonder, you know, this really shouldn't be a problem, but there's such a, a mindset that it consistently is, and it might cause people to take longer to notice what could actually be the trigger for their acne. So, you know, for me, I just gotta say, approach this one with caution. I definitely wouldn't recommend it for a sensitive skin type. I'm ending this video with the Rose Hibiscus Coconut Water Hydrating Face Mist. This is $32 for four ounces, and the only reason this is last in this video is because they just changed their formula. How many of you guys have been on this channel long enough to have been around for me expressing my frustration with this situation? I just get finished testing a product and then find out that it's ingredients list changes. But you know, I do like the changes that I see. They've added in hyaluronic acid, they've added in coconut powder. I hope that coconut powder doesn't freak anybody out because it's certainly not the same as coconut oil. I think it has a lot of potential. I just, I guess what I tried was just kind of okay. It didn't really stand out in my mind as much. I've tried a ton of mists at this point, uh, many of which have been at the drugstore and I felt like they're every bit as effective as more expensive ones. So, you know, for me, this product was just okay. It's not something where I really see myself actively trying to repurchase it, but if I can get a sample of the new formulation, I will definitely try it. And then my review for this will actually be, you know, kind of a heck of a lot more complete. But that is my review of the Herbivore brand. I'm really, really happy with the results from these products. I can certainly see myself repurchasing, especially the first three products that I talked about in this video. And you know, again, I just have so much respect for the brand actually taking a lot of precautions in the way that they formulate their products. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like and comment. I didn't try a whole ton of products from this brand, so drop me a comment if you tried more products. Let me know your experience. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.